Hello everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, troubleshooting Neutron, a real quick talk. Uh, some quick background first. Uh, we're a public cloud provider, so we have all kinds of customers using uh, the service. We have eight sites in six countries, and everything is built on a standard OpenStack uh, components as far as we have been possible for us. And in this Neutron case, uh, what this is based on is uh, our experiences with uh, Neutron, ML2, and OpenV switch. Uh, we started out with Icehouse once upon a time, and uh, nowadays uh, we're in Metaka, Newton, or Okata, depending on where in the upgrade cycle the actual uh, installation is in. First, a few words about where to look when you're looking for uh, see an issue that has to do with Neutron or uh, the networking of the, uh, of the installation. Uh, the number one thing is, of course, log, log files. Uh, you have all the logs from Neutron, of course, agents. Uh, you have log files from uh, uh, operating systems. You might have network equipment that, uh, that generate logs as well. Uh, configuration files is always uh, interesting to look at as well. Both uh, the static configuration files, I mean Neutron.com for uh, agent configurations and so on, but also the dynamic configurations that, for example, VPN as a service generates or uh, uh, load balancer as a service generates to see that, that they meet the expectations of uh, what, what they should be did, uh, concerning your uh, configuration of the services. Uh, also, source code diffs, uh, reviews, bug reports, of course. Uh, especially if you, for example, uh, find a bug after doing an upgrade. It's really interesting to be able to look at diff, uh, diffs and see what, what changes has, has been made in between the releases. Uh, and the other way around as well, to see that if you're running an older version, you might uh, want to look at, okay, what have changed in this place where you have found that the problem uh, is probably located and see what code has been changed there to be able to maybe, maybe find out if it's fixed or not, even if you don't find a specific bug report or, or not good enough at searching. <laughs> um, also, uh, the IP NetNS uh, exec uh, command is really useful. You can uh, execute commands in the network namespaces and see, uh, uh, see how different uh, things are set up inside the router namespace. For example, in this case, it uh, will just show the IP addresses uh, and the, um, the interfaces, but you can also do TCP dumps and uh, stuff like that inside the namespace. And TCP dump is always your friend when you're doing network, uh, network analysis of any kind. Also the OpenV switch command, so VS, uh, VSCTL show, for example, to just see the ports and uh, bridges and so on that has been set up in the OpenV switch. Or OVS DPCTL dump flows, where you see, um, uh, actually see the flows that has been configured into uh, the OpenV switch. And all the OVS commands is uh, basically interesting and you, can, you should check them out and know what, um, what they do. Uh, one challenge we had was to make uh, VPN as a service work. Uh, we had a number of different problems there and that we had to troubleshoot and, uh, and fix to, to get VPN uh, as a service to work. Uh, this was over time, all those uh, issues, and not at the same time. So, I mean, uh, some of them, uh, mo most of them are fixed in one way or another nowadays. Uh, one of them was uh, that uh, we were running an implementation with StrongSwan on CentOS and uh, actually the template file for StrongSwan missed a lot of parameters. Uh, so it worked if you were uh, doing, creating a VPN tunnel between uh, two similar uh, OpenStack installations as uh, the configurations would be the same at both places, but not correct. But if you were doing a VPN connection to something else, your VPN appliance or, or so on, it would of course fail. That was fixed and we found, of, uh, found uh, that it had been added a few days earlier in repo, so we could just uh, share pick those changes and, uh, and everything worked fine with, when it came to those templates. Uh, when it comes to next one was uh, just a simple uh, no filter matched error that uh, they were missing some, uh, some uh, root wrap uh, uh, policies for, uh, to be able to uh, execute some commands that the VPN agent needed to execute to make things work. Uh, the next one is quite interesting. Uh, the problem there is uh, that when you do a ping from, uh, from a router namespace and try to ping over a VPN connection, you would get a no buffer space available error. 
That error was, uh, is generally due to uh, uh, the XFRM uh, for GC threshold being set too low. And the first uh, thing there was, okay, if you set that uh, value, that sysctl value on uh, the actual host, the network node or, uh, uh, and so on, that will not help as it's not set inside the namespace. So that's the first thing you had to fix, that actually uh, make uh, the namespace creation code or uh, VPN agent uh, 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 set that value on creation. Uh, the second problem was uh, actually a kernel bug, that uh, there was a problem there where even if you had set the uh, threshold uh, correctly uh, to a larger number, as large number as you needed, uh, the kernel bug would, uh, uh, was that ca some counters were affecting between uh, network namespaces. So this was only applicable if you had multiple namespaces, uh, for example, in an OpenStack installation or uh, other types of similar installations, uh, and that one was fixed. Fixed. Uh, we could uh, uh, fi find the bug report for it, and it was actually fixed in the kernel, later versions of the kernel. And then some other just very simple updates of connection status that wasn't um, incorrect, so it, that was just a cherry-picked fix as well. Uh, another problem uh, that was interesting was that we saw that we intermittently uh, customers lost connectivity to external networks. Uh, the report said something like losing, they were losing connectivity for a few minutes now and then. And we couldn't find anything in uh, any re relevant logs. Uh, and also an important thing here is that we were running L3HA. And that, that will be important, obviously, in, a, in the next slide. Uh, another thing was that a ping from a virtual machine uh, or a router namespace fixed the issue for a while until it came uh, back the next time. Uh, the issue here was uh, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the thing there was we started out with doing some um, uh, TCP dumps and seeing that, okay, traffic is not ending up at the master um, uh, VRRP instance, uh, the, not the master HA router. So we started looking at the switch, um, uh, switches and saw that the MAC address table were changing, which means that uh, in the working case, it was uh, directing the MAC address of the router to the correct uh, network node. In the other case, it was not. It was different port channels in this case. Uh, the problem here was that um, when you have forwarding enabled, uh, in IPv6 forwarding enabled in uh, a router, uh, you will actually uh, answer some, um, you, you will actually subscribe to some multicast listener, listeners, listener queues, and you will respond if you get uh, messages from those. And in this case, if it responds to something or uh, sends even one packet out, the switch will see that uh, MAC address is located behind uh, another uh, port channel. Uh, this was fixed uh, in uh, later on. We, we fixed it, uh, worked around it, but uh, it was fixed later on, and we found some, some bug reports to, uh, concerning it. Another thing uh, that's a bit interesting when you have a public cloud is that you have all kinds of customers. Uh, and not all those customers you actually want. Uh, some of them are, might be uh, looking to do denial of service attacks or stuff like that. So we have to sort out the bad apples, uh, the bad customers that want to do bad things to, to other customers or to um, other citizens on the network. Uh, some things that will help there uh, are quality of service and NetFlow and traffic protection. Uh, those things are, are interesting, but we've also implemented some scripts that are talking to the libvirt on uh, running on the compute nodes and anal analyze them and uh, alert uh, uh, on traffic, basically get uh, the BPS uh, and uh, 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 packets per second for uh, all the virtual instances. And you can analyze that and alert on uh, uh, misbehavior. We also push, push this data to Graphite, so we can easily generate a graph like this with uh, the top five uh, uh, packet producers. Uh, another thing that we've seen lots of problems with is uh, resyncing uh, uh, OVS agents and uh, L3 agents. 
Uh, we have seen this both after upgrades, after reboots, uh, after OVS agent restarts, and uh, it has been very time consuming and you have seen uh, disturbances on the data plane. Uh, there was also a kernel bug that uh, when it's creating uh, network namespaces, uh, it got slower and slower the, more, the larger number of namespaces uh, were created. And that, that bug is fixed a long time ago, but it, it was uh, uh, really uh, affecting uh, the resync. Uh, it's much better now than, it, uh, than before, and lots of work has been done on, uh, on preventing uh, data plane interruptions, so it's working much better now. And also L3HA, of course, will help. If you have a problem on one node, you'll uh, be able to move the, the, the router will move over to, to another network node, and that works. Also, I'm just, uh, I'm out of time, so I'm just gonna say kind of one word about this. You have to sh be really careful about, about the MTUs uh, in every part, both hardware and uh, network equipment and operating systems and Neutron. And there has been some bugs, but lots of work has been done there as well now, really recently uh, on the, the MTU handling in the Neutron. And basically that they should match. And uh, different network equipments might have different definitions. Some of them think that uh, it's including headers, some don't, some include VLAN uh, tags, and some don't, and so on. So you really have to be really careful and read the documentation of the equipment. Uh, and also note that you actually set a physical network MTU in ne Neutron. So if you set it, for example, if you use VXLAN and set it to 1500, the physical uh, uh, MTU, uh, the MTU of um, uh, actual interfaces uh, in namespaces and so on will be 1450, uh, as the headers uh, will build up there. So if you want it to be 1500 there, you have to make sure that uh, your uh, physical network can uh, handle larger packets and you have set it to uh, uh, 1550 in, uh, in Neutron. Uh, and the last uh, slide here, uh, it's finding issues before the user does. That's always what you want to do. And you, of course there you want to analyze the logs, you want to put alerts on everything that, uh, that could be interesting, and you want to graph as much as possible to be able at least to uh, find the uh, problems afterwards and uh, visualize those uh, things that are much easier to see in a graphical way. And the most important thing of all, uh, after each failure, do analyze why, it, uh, why there was a problem or why did you didn't detect it or why did you didn't see it and improve over time. That's really important. Thank you.